Hello and welcome to another Rebel Coach Conversation. Today we are so lucky because my sister Marcy Stout and me, Allison Nissen, the co-founders of Rebel Coach, are honored to have with us Petra Krebs, who is one of our favorites. She's also part of our network. She is a speaker, a trainer, a certified coach by the best-selling author John Gordon and Gallup, and she is a strength-based uh, what are we going to call you? A strength-based coach? <laughs> strength. <laughs> She's known as the strength strategist. There you go. She's known as the strength strategist. So Pedro, welcome so much. Uh, we are glad you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. This is just my, my favorite way to spend my time is with Allison and Marcy of Rebel Coach. So um, it's a great morning today. Oh, well, Petra. So like we said, we are thrilled you're here and I'd love to just start off. What is a strength strategist? How do you do you? Oh, thank you for asking. You know, um, it feels like I do so many things and it really boils down to igniting strengths within people. And so, um, it all started just by wanting to see people win. And so, um, I've been a coach and mentor for a long time in the corporate world. And then I was in direct sales for over a decade, leading 250 entrepreneurs. And so it's always been about seeing people win. And when I was introduced to Gallup strengths, um, finder now known as Clifton strengths, um, it really allowed to ignite uniqueness in people. Um, but I also use, John Gordon's um, Power Positive Team and Power Positive Leadership in my work to build a base of leadership training, team training. So just like both of you, over time, we develop a toolbox of um, just tools, expertise we pick up along the way, and then a vast um, array of tools and, and people we meet as well. So um, by community and the work I've done and the work I'm still learning to do, I really um, consider myself a strengths strategist. Wonderful. Well, I've been fortunate enough to know to see your work firsthand when you've coached me, but also coaching organizations. So I'd love to start with if there's a company out there and they're trying to find a new way to do employee engagement and figure things out, how do you use strength finders in your work and how do you work with companies? Can you just share a little bit about how um, how you make the impact the way you do? Yes, I would love to. You know, uh, one of my go-to tools, and I'm sure you're familiar familiar with it, right? Gallup is um, such a great um, data company. Gallup polls have been around forever, but one of my go-to tools is the state of the global workplace. And so it really gives you a good indication of what's going on in the world and companies and in businesses. And so um, you're right, employee engagement. Is, is a big, big um, factor in how we operate, the profit we have, the retention rates we have. And so when I go into work with organizations, it's really just about you know, getting to know what they have and what they want, and then a gap analysis of maybe things they're not seeing that could really get them to raise their employee engagement. And so by discovering your strengths within the organization, and it's not just about Clifton strengths, but it's about what's your unique value add in the world? How do you show up in that global workplace? And what difference do you want to make? What is your why? What is your purpose? And then um, we go from there. So do you start off, like when you're working with a client, do you find that um, you'll you'll start, say, with the executive team? Do you find that within that first introduction, you're already seeing some opportunities where there could be some gaps or there, you know, how, how uh, transparent are they when you're starting with them and you know what their needs are? Um, Marcy, I'm glad you said the executive leadership because um, Gallup says that 70% of the variance of employee engagement comes from their managers and leaders. Mm -hmm. So that's how much impact they have. Um, just here in this, this Zoom room, right? Um, how many of us have um, quit a job because of the leader or because of the boss? A lot of people don't leave companies. They leave because of leadership. And um, so really pouring into that leadership, that's the pot, right? Whether That's where we start when we develop a strengths-based organization is talking to the executive team one-on-one -on -one coaching so that we can get some authentic and honest feedback of where are they in their employee well-being? 
where are they in their level of engagement and um, rating themselves and then, you know, talking to them about what that would look like to um, have a higher score of engagement. And so working with them and getting the take on on um, how they're feeling in their position, I find a lot of leaders want to be their best, but they're stretched thin. They maybe have not had the training that it actually takes to be at the level of leadership. Sometimes we do a really good job at um, being the employee and then we get promoted. We're like, oh my gosh, I'm the leader. And I mean, that happened to me a lot of times too, where I felt like, you know, I was really like skinning my knees and um, just winging it. And and so um, giving the leader the opportunity to um, really assess their own leadership and their own engagement is number one. And then um, getting their lens on their team and the organization. And so doing those surveys, having those one-on-one -on -one conversations then lead to that analysis of what does a, you know, a thriving strength-based business, what would that look like for them? It's unique for everyone, as you know, Marcy, because you, you work with a lot of organizations as well. And when you do that discovery phase, um, when you engage in that discovery phase, you also get to have that lens of finding out what makes that organization unique and what makes the leaders unique. And then um, we trickle down into what is the uniqueness of the team? Are people on the right seat of the bus? Sometimes, you know, I've been in organizations and um, one of a mutual client we share, Marcy, one of the employees actually came up to me after a strength session and said, I'm so glad we did this. I'm not sure I was going to stay. I've been on the wrong seat of the bus. And she was able to have that conversation with her manager to say, these are my gifts. These are my talents. And they were able to move her into another position and she's thriving. She is. Sometimes, she is. Right. So sometimes we just need an adjustment. It doesn't mean that the company is bad or the leadership is bad. It's just, you know, we're changing too all the time. Well, that's what I love about your work. So while you're working for the organization or for the leadership, you're really, it's that unique power of you that you talk about is you help, whether it's the leaders do this for their teams or do it directly with the team, like help them figure out their own strengths. And so for me, the one thing I learned from you when you were coaching me is, so my top strengths, I have, you know, futuristic, and then I've got activator and I have achiever. And if you combine those three strengths into one, it just makes me very busy. I like thinking of the future. <laughs> And then I like thinking of the idea to solve it. And then I had to do anything to, to finish it. So I'm very busy. But the when you think about employee engagement, there's such a difference between being busy and engaged. So what I recognize and learned from you is like, those three are my strengths and that's what gets me to where I am. But when I'm stressed, I lean into those same strengths and then I get overwhelmed, which creates disengagement. So it's kind of that pendulum swing of like really knowing, you know, when to lean into your strengths and when to um, recognize your strengths or maybe not serving you. So yeah. I'd like to share you a little bit more. Um, I just gave the, the coaching insight. That <laughs> I, learned no, I, love it. I love it. Um, Marcy, that is um, probably the whole reason I, I do what I do. We spend so much time at work, even as entrepreneurs, the three of us, we are constantly thinking about work. <laughs> we are uh, wanting to make a difference in this world. And so when we are not using our gifts and talents for um, the full potential and the full intention, then we become disengaged, even as entrepreneurs, right? I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed today. I'm so tired, right? I'm in overdrive. Um, and now imagine at the workplace when you have individuals who are supposed to come together as teams to accomplish great things. And so if we can recognize when we are, and Gallup will say in the balcony or the basement, um, you know, Rebel Coach, you say above the line, below the line, right? Like when are we, and I would, I would say, when are we in health? When do we feel our best? When are we in green energy versus red energy? And so we need to be mindful of that. And having a coach, whether it's a strengths-based coach or any kind of coaching or consulting, sheds a light on things that you cannot see for yourself because sometimes you're too busy, frankly, and, and, and there's a job to be done. And so having an outside consultant come in should really be a positive experience. It should be somebody that can shed a light on um, some of those um, gaps. And there's just a few adjustments we can do and everybody deserves to have well-being in the workplace. And, and Petra, so you've mentioned um, the basement and red energy. Uh, and I know that a lot of people, like from my viewpoint, I'm 
in within education, a lot of people, they want to fix what is really challenging for them. Like, I'm not good at math. I better practice a lot more math so that I can become good at math. But that's not their strength. And so now they're pouring a lot of time and energy into something that will never be a strength. So how do you address that that idea of the, the your basement talents and your red the things that cause you red energy? Like how do you how do you work with people in that? Allison, that's such a great question. And I am a former teacher. So right, I'm still I feel like I'm still a teacher. I'm still teaching. Um and I love nothing more than actually coaching um, young and career. So shout out to um, Revel Network, <laughs> right? So um, really pouring into young people because you're right. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm not good at math or I'm not good at this. And Don Clifton, who invented Clifton Strengths, says, what would happen if we focus on what is right with people instead of what is wrong with people? And that's as parents, as teachers, um, even as individuals, um, you know, I always love to say, stop focusing what is wrong and ignite what is strong. And it doesn't mean that we don't fix the things that, you know, um, we're having problems with, or we don't try hard. Like we've got to read, we've got to write, we've got to do math. Um, you know, so it's not that we ignore those things, but we really look at, is this in the way of me achieving my goal? If it's reading, writing math, yes. Right. We've got to do some of these things. But what is it that I'm really good at? What do I actually have that I could use instead of this? What is the power and the unique talent that's been given to me? And so um, my in my bottom uh, five, right, and my weaknesses or my red energy is the strengths of analytical. I am not a spreadsheet person. Do not leave me all day behind a computer, right, doing numbers and, and analyz analyzation or an so. But in the job that I do going into corporations, I have to do a lot of analytics. I look at profits and loss statements. I look at gap analysis um, with numbers because people want profit. They want safety. They want um, engagement and numbers don't lie. And so number, there's truth between, you know, with the numbers. But if I spend a whole day on a spreadsheet in front of those um, numbers, it, that's red energy for me. So it's not my gift. My gift and talent, right, is my top five are the positivity, it's strategic, it's learner, it's input, it's includer. Those are my top five. So I really am relationship building oriented. And even though analytical is a strategic thinking skill, um, I am more of a map maker. I love the strategizing of what to do with the numbers instead of actually proving the numbers right or wrong. And so there's a difference there. And so I, I try to partner with people who are really good at analytical and data um, data analysis that have that strength. And together we create magic. So it's really about, you know, partnering with people who have what you don't have and that creates strong teams. So in, since you're in education, Allison, I would say if you have a student that is struggling in an area, you know, is this something that they are going to have to master or is it something that they can do and manage their red and green energy? And maybe spend most of their other energy doing what they do well. So um, some things I always uh, will say to, to clients, is this something that you need to lean into because you need it? Like, I, I need to lean into the analytical part of me because I do need it for um, my job and the coaching and the consulting that I do. But I manage how often and, and the energy I put towards it. Is this, So is it something that you need to do? Is it something that you need to learn? Is it something you can draw up? It doesn't even matter. Is this something, you know, or is it something you need to delegate to a team member or a consultant or a coach? Is somebody, you know, is there somebody that could help you and come alongside of you to um, ignite that? So I hope that answers the question. The other thing I want to say real quick is um, make a green, red, green sandwich. <laughs> For a lot of us, when we have a red energy project, or we are spending a lot of time in that red energy, or we have, you know, we have something, oh, I don't want to do this, right? It could be dishes. It could be anything. We, sh we put it off. We go, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll just do it tomorrow. And then the sink with the dishes is just piling up and piling up. And then we've got like a 
whole red energy day, it's probably dishes and laundry and all of the things. And so I've noticed that I work best when I do my energy sandwich. I wake up in the morning and I do a green activity. So something that brings me energy, it's usually, um, you know, I'm, I'm a faith-based individual. So it's usually spending time in my faith and, and conversation with God. And then it's tackling the red. Then I take a break in uh, at lunch and I'll go outside. Nature is my green energy as well. Uh, my pet is my green energy. And so then um, I'll go back and tackle the red. And then I end my day with green energy. It's a conversation with a friend. It's, you know, hot cup of tea with my husband, whatever it is. Um, you want to start green and end green. <laughs> Don't get caught up in the, in the red, but uh, sometimes we can't avoid it. That's like the simplest analogy, but it's so true. Cause I always say like, you know, time is finite. You're only 24 hours a day, but energy is renewable. So as long as you're renewing your energy and doing it like first thing, last thing, that just helps you, you know, be proud of your day. Like you're just ending it on a positive note. Yeah. I love it. Great, great way to put that too, Marcy. So one thing that I do like about, another thing I like about your work is it gives a language. So where with the employee that's maybe looking to get promoted within the company or switch to another thing, categorizing where their strengths are and then thinking differently, not in the what's wrong, but in where do my strengths align? It helps with the language. It helps with what we're finding is the students that are applying for jobs. If they know their strengths, then they can kind of start matching up. Like, you know, these strengths usually have green energy around these titles or these industries, which is so helpful. Um, how Can you share any stories about how you pull that out and explain it in a way, I'll give one a little quick example. So we, <laughs> I know we, I was going to say, you probably have so many. Yeah. Apples. We, yeah. You were such a great coach for me. So what I found is like, for instance, I had positivity in my top and I had empathy, which I feel like an empathetic person, <laughs> but I had empathy one of my last. So I get the results, like a, like a very standard person when they see their results and you go to the, what's my bottom 10 year, what's my bottom five. Oh, what's immediate, my immediately. Right. We all want to know what's yeah. wrong with us. Yep. And you taught me like strengths is the one that you don't do it like that. Like you look at them all your strengths. So what I learned with my empathy is I'm so high with positivity that if somebody falls and skins their knees, I'm quick to be like, Hey, get up, you know, you'll be all right. Let's put a bandaid on and move on. Like I don't wallow in the mud long, but that's why I have low empathy because it kind of balances each other. But what I learned in, from, from your insight is that there are people that need me to stay in the pain a little bit longer so they can communicate with more depth of why they bumped their knee, you know, what happened and all that stuff. So I found myself a better coach because I recognized my want to move to the future. My want to be like, it'll be okay. Let's, let's have a better plan. Doesn't serve people when they're in a point of pain. And so learning that my empathy is not not my natural strength that I had to like find more time to stay in it. So, yes. I, oh my I gosh, feel like you did a better job than me, but explaining it, but no, it was, it's so eye-opening. And how yeah. you Thanks. That's the perfect example, um, Marcy, and we share that in common. So it's so funny. I just noticed that the the um, graphic behind me, right, the virtual background positivity right over my head. <laughs> so yay! Um, I share that too. And then empathy is in the middle. And so positivity will go into a room or into a situation to change the energy. Empathy goes into a room or a situation to feel the energy. That's the big difference. And so if we're constant, we're trying to change the energy, we're not really feeling. And so again, that's that, that basement, right? Where sometimes we have to sit with people, but um, back to your question, Marcy, about how do you draw this out of people? It's a language. So number one, I love that you said it's a common, it's a language on its own Gallup strengths, but it's not complicated. So there's some definitions to the strengths, but it's not this overarching science or equation of now the whole company has to learn this new language. It just um, unlocks a, a common language. So now we can say, oh my gosh, I love your positivity or I love your empathy. So now we know exactly what that means. What I'm saying is I love the way you felt what I'm feeling. So, but now we speak a common language as a family or as a company. Um, but also we are often told be, you know, be all you can be or bring your best or you, you know, you've got so much potential. And as a young person and even a person at my age, sometimes I'm like, well, what is that potential? <laughs> what does that look like? What are really my strengths? I don't know. I really don't like doing this. I like doing that. 
So having an assessment, whether it is DISC, Myers-Briggs, Clifton Strengths, Cloverleaf, anything that causes that or provides self-awareness is so important. It's a shortcut. It's a tool for you to extract what's inside through an assessment. And then you get to look at that assessment and take ownership. And Clifton Strengths called the, the name, claim, and aim. You know, what is true for me? How has this worked for me in the past? And how will I use this talent or this gift to aim it at my future? And so you have a language to describe to people, to future employers, to your teammates, to your boss of what's important to you. I was just in a session, a full day session with um, some teams yesterday. And I mean, it was like just light bulbs and fireworks because they're like, yes, this is me. This is what I've been trying to tell you. And one of the teams was brand new. Um, there were six of them, four, four new team members. And they're like, oh, is this how you think? Is this what you feel? And they're like, yep, actually, you know, is it bad that I have a significance, but I really do want to stand for something. And so we get to have that conversation. And to your point, Marcy, um, a lot of companies and organizations and um and universities and schools will use assessments, right, on students or people. And they check a box and they go, okay, well, now you have your Myers Briggs. Now you've got your Clifton Strengths. And a lot of times I'll meet them later on in career. And I go, oh, are you, are you familiar with this assessment? And they'll say, oh, yeah, I took it a long time ago. Or, oh, I took it with my other job. And I'll say, well, did they, you know, did somebody come in, explain this to you? Did you have a debrief? And unfortunately, that doesn't happen a lot of times. And I know it's always time and money when you look at talent development. And for ourselves too, if I'm going to invest in an assessment and I'm going to invest in a coach, it's time and money. So Petra, but how I could pitch. people, how could people learn more from you? How could they get in touch with you? Like what, what do you have going on that everyone can, can learn from you? Oh, thank you so much. I just, I, I feel like it's that time and money thing and just doing something is better than nothing. So thank you for asking. I think that, um, you know, definitely reach out to me. I love being a resource for building strengths-based organizations and also shifting, um, you know, mindsets. I mean, making sure that um, organizations stay in that growth mindset, especially through transitions. So as a coach and a consultant, I can come in and, and do a 30 minute, right? Kind of debrief or um, consultation. And then I've worked with some organizations for up to three years now. And so it just um, depends on your need. But I say back to the time and money, something is better than nothing, right? Um, taking that extra step, keep following the crumbs to success. I love it. Wonder and Go ahead, Allison. <laughs> you go. I know we're, I was we're gonna so ask excited you, to be with each other. <laughs> I was going to ask you for um, your website information. Well, thank you. Uh, you can find me at patrakrebs.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Please send me a message. You can book a call directly on my uh, website, just a 15 minute consultation. And you know, whether it's struggling as a leader, struggling as a team or as an individual, just please reach out. Um, also, you can find me um, for a mastermind at Rebel Coach. I'm so excited that we're building a community, Marcy and Allison, of people who can meet once a month to actually talk about building strengths-based businesses. So I love being in partnership with um, all of you. And so just thank you so much again for having me on today. We love we love every minute with you. So especially um, all the times we've had and today was no different. And I can be a personal testimony to your individual coaching, your team coaching, and then also at a company wide. So how you magically can handle a room of 100 people to one person to small teams. It's really it's such a gift. And um, you've clearly found your strength in this strength strategist. So thank you so much for being with us. We enjoyed our conversation. Thank you, guys. I'll see you soon.